So welcome to, to our lecture 5. This is the lecture 5. Today's topic is isolated singular points of an analytic function and their type. So let me write the title. Let's see. Isolated singular points of an analytic function. So, to say briefly what's a singular point, a singular point for a function f of z, so z0, mm, z0, singular point, maybe I'll write it down in red, singular point of f of z if f of z is not analytic at z0 and that includes of course the possibility that z0 is not in the domain of definition of the function f so uh, and point z0 is isolated isolated singular point or singularity of f of z if in a small neighborhood z0 is the only singular point of z0. Of, of course, let me make a picture. So that means simply this is my point z0. This is our singularity. There exists a small neighborhood. So let's say that's my small neighborhood. You can say, okay, radius here is an epsilon. And what do we have here? Here, the function is not analytic. So this is singular point. But here, the function is analytic inside the disk. Analytic. So f of z is analytic here except that one. In such a case, of course, you can see that this particular A, put it like this, the A is annulus, so I can say this is the set of all Z such that, let me write it nicely, Z dot dot, and this is zero, smaller, Z minus Z zero, smaller than epsilon, so this is an annulus, so in such a case, the function f of z, so f of z has a Lorentz series expansion. In, in this domain A, in the annulus A. So let's write it down. And then we have here that this f of z can be written, and we have here two parts. So those are the positive par powers, which we call analytic part of Lorentz series expansion. So this is a n, and this is z minus z zero to the power n. And the second one, those are the negative powers. So this is n is equal to one to infinity. And then you have a minus n, and these are negative powers, z minus z zero to the power n. So let me say that, again, this is analytic part, and that one is principal, principal part of Lorentz series expansion. 
Just to, to be clear, I will denote the principal part like P, P of Z, P of Z, principal part. So now we have the following definition. An isolated singular point z0 of the function of f of z is said to be, and let me continue, a Removable singularity if the principal part P of Z P of Z is identically zero is zero. That means simply P of Z is identically zero. That means there are no that's no 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 negative powers in the Lorentz series expansion of Z. No negative powers in Lorentz series expansion of f of z maybe ugly, 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 ugly. f of z at z zero so that means removable singularity if the only analytic part of the expansion is there and then b It will call we call it um, pole pole and I will specify it here if the principal part P of Z is finite is finite and in such a case that simply means that this principal part so that's only the negative powers so let me write it down so I'm getting here e a minus 1 and this is z minus z 0 plus 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 and maybe like that. okay put here or not put here a minus 2 z minus z 0 plus 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 and the last one non-zero so this one is non-zero so this will be z minus z zero to the power m so here must be two so that one this is the last one is equal non-zero equal and all the other zero zero zeros so that means if the principal part is pz pz and it and if it ends at m so this is the last one that is that the coefficient a m is non-zero, so so in such a case we will also say that z zero is a pole of order of order. M. So this is the pole of order M. So let me point out, let's say, which, what is the order M. So this is the order M. M is this number, this power, this one. So this is pole of order M. Pole of order M. And, and those, that's the second type. And C and C means simply in other cases, essential singularity, otherwise, otherwise, it is 
called essential singularity. Essential singularity. And 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 that of course means that the principal part P of Z of the Lorentz series expansion has infinitely many many negative powers with non-zero coefficient. Infinitely many negative powers. So, so this is basically the statement that is, that is uh, showing what kind of, we have three kinds of isolated singular points, either a removable singularity or pole, and it can be a pole of order M, maybe, maybe, let's put another definition here, definition, just to make sure, definition, so we understand that there is a kind of a special type of the pole, pole. so a pole, a pole of order zero, of order, z sorry, of order one, one will be called, will be called a simple pole, simple pole, simple pole. That means order one means the simple pole, okay? So that's the kind of the terminology we'll be applying later. So let's start with the few results that will help us to determine in a practical way the type of the singularity, of isolated singularity. So maybe let me put it down the following. So start with the theorem 1. Let Z0 be an isolated singular point can the following can the following conditions are equivalent. So let's start with first condition, Z0, maybe put it like, oh, what is that? Oh, uh, point of F of Z, mm. isolated singular point of F of Z. I'm so sorry, I should write it down, F of Z. Z0 is a removable singularity B limit as n goes sorry limit as z goes to 0 of f of z exists and is finite, exists and exists and is finite. And three, C, there exists an epsilon larger than zero and there exists an M, an M, such that for every Z, if you have here, zero smaller than z minus z, zero smaller than m, 
this will so epsilon this will imply that f of z is smaller than n i can put it smaller equal that means simply the function the function f of z is bounded in a neighborhood of z0 maybe put it like deleted neighbor <gasps> something happened oh so i should write it down in uh, deleted a deleted neighborhood that means without point z0 neighborhood of z0 so okay let me do the proof i think hope it's enough proof and we have here the first one so we start we start that a implies b which is quite clear because in such a case since f of z has the Lorentz series expansion Lorentz series expansion n is equal to zero to infinity and this is a n z minus z zero to the power n and there is no principle so this is zero principle is zero so then clearly So no principle, yes, because it is removable singularity, so we have here removable principle, part is zero, so I can write it down. So we have here that limit of z goes to z zero of f of z. So what I can do, I can just plug it in here. So we plug it here, so this will become z0, so I'm getting this is equal a0. So exists, exists, and is bounded. So now let's prove that b implies c. So suppose limit z minus, sorry, going to z0 of f of z, call it alpha, I don't just simply exist exists and is finite, exists and is finite, and that implies that there exists, sorry, that for every, that for every, uh, hmm, let's say like this, epsilon larger, to maybe I change it a little, I will write for every delta, may, maybe write delta, okay, I will use eta. Eta larger than zero, there exists epsilon larger than zero, such that for every z, if you have here zero smaller, z minus z zero smaller than epsilon, then this will imply that f of z minus alpha is smaller than eta smaller than eta, I can put it even smaller equal, but the last inequality, the last inequality can be written like this, this is using the, the triangle inequality, this is larger than f of z minus up, uh, no absolute value of alpha, so that implies basically that f of z is smaller than alpha plus Eta. So I can call this number M and I see, oh, that's exactly the condition which is listed in C. So this means C is satisfied. And finally, C implies A and in order to prove that one, we use the Cauchy inequality. For Lorentz series, And we have here that if we know that we know that A 
that absolute value of a n is smaller equal than the constant n. So this is the constant n standing here because the function is larger than, so it's smaller equal than this constant. Here we have it. And then I put it here divided. And now I have here, and I have here uh, r to the power, sorry, in our case r to the power n. And what is r our case? So in this case, uh, let me make a picture. So here we have here, so here we have here this, 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 this is the disk. So this is my z0, this is my epsilon, and I choose the r to be the radius of this circle sitting inside. So I know that this is the circle around the z0. So z0 is, of course, taken out from this domain, but still we have the, this, in a, this, this Cauchy inequality for n belonging to z. And in particular, if n is for a negative, in, so put here like this negative, so this is negative, negative coefficient, coefficient. So in such a case, the negative coefficient means simply I have to take this n and this r minus 1, so I just write it down, rn. And in this case, you can see that, that you can see that epsilon, so ex, the r, so r is uh, basically, basically smaller than epsilon. This one is smaller than 0, so I can say r goes to 0. Then I'm getting here, that's positive power, so it goes to 0. And of course, consequently, we are getting that all negative coefficients are zero. And this means nothing else than the principal part P of Z must be identically zero. All those coefficients are zero. So that's the way basically to, to, to show these the, this equivalences. So let me go to the next result. And the next result is about the poles. So let me do it. So put it like this theorem number two. Let Z0 be an isolated singular point of the function f of z. Then the following two conditions. are satisfied. And this is A, and this will be exactly the one that uh, Z0 is a pole. Doesn't matter what order. Order 1, 2, or 3, doesn't matter. And B, limit, as N goes to infinity of Z, mm. not erasing. Okay, limit as z goes to z0 of f of z must be equal to infinity. So this is the limit. z goes to z0. So proof So let's prove it. So in such a case the first thing what we notice is the following. Since say A implies B a implies B. And what do I get here? So, so let me write it down. So F of Z, this is a pole, so I can write it down. So we have here like this A minus M. So this is my first non-zero coefficient. So maybe let me write it like this a minus m, this is non-zero coefficient, that's our pole. This one is z minus z0 to the power m, and then you have here a minus m plus 1 divided by z minus z0 to the power m minus 1, and then this goes here, this is a minus 1, this is z minus z0 
then you have plus a0 plus a1 z minus z0 and so on so that's how the Lorentz series starts and ends at infinity so I can pull it out so I'm getting here that this one is equal to z minus z0 to the power n and then of course I'm having here a minus m plus a minus m plus 1 and this will be z minus z0 plus 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 and this will be a0 z minus z0 to the power m plus 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 so you notice this is a regular power series so I can denote this power series like a function of g of z and this power series has values so of course it is a you can see that g of z0 is different than 0 because g of z0 is exactly a minus n so in such a case I can write it down that f of z and f of z is equal and what do I get here? I'm getting here that this one is actually equal and I put it like this I can take it 1 over z uh, minus z0 to the power n and this will be g of z and then if the, uh, okay and then we can write it down z goes to z0 I'm getting 1 over 0 plus times a minus m different than 0 we are getting infinity so that's the infinity it's going to 0 so that means the limit is infinity GLC. the limit is infinity okay so a implies b and what about b implies a and this case is also not difficult because you can just simply notice so take take the function g of z is equal and then this function will be 1 over f of z 1 over f of z and since since and since limit as z goes to z0 of g of z is the same as 1 divided by limit z goes to z0 f of z and that one is 1 over infinity which one is equal to 0 we obtain, obtain that g0 that g z has removable singularity at z0 so that means simply we can write it down 1 over f of z which is equal g of z will be equal and now let me write it down this will be starts with certain am because it has to be non-zero power series because function f of z has isolated singularity so that means it is definitely different in so it's well defined and cannot be equal to zero everywhere so so that means this cannot be equal so this is different than zero and then we have here z minus z zero to the power m plus 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 okay plus a m plus one this is z minus z zero to the power n plus one plus 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 and then I say okay let me pull it out let me pull it out and I pull it like like this so this is z minus z zero to the power m and what do I have in the brackets we have a m plus a m minus one z minus z zero plus a m minus sorry plus one plus two z minus z zero 
square and many many other call this function h of z and and then I see that this function actually is equal z minus z0 times analytic function because that's a power series this is analytic function and here we have here this analytic function similarly as in the previous case mm, it's also different than so this is different than zero because this one is equal to a m and that one is not equal to zero so that is not equal to zero so that function is also h of z different than zero in a neighborhood of z0 including z0 so you can rewrite it and you can write it down like this f of z will be equal and that one is equal 1 over z minus z0 to the power m and that one is equal 1 over h of z yes and since this is if you take analytic function, divide by analytic function, is analytic because we know the derivative exists, so it is analytic. So in such a case, I have here that in such a case, I can rewrite it down like that. That's an analytic function. So maybe let me do it like this. I take a red one and I put here, this is analytic, analytic function. One over h of this, so I can write it down and then I can write it down, this is z minus z0 to the power x. Analytic function has the power, power series expansion, so let me write it down, this will be like a b0 plus b1 z minus z0 plus 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 bn z minus z0 n plus plus plus, and what do I get here? I'm getting B0 divided by Z minus Z0M, and this is plus B1, and this is Z minus Z0M minus 1, plus, 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 and this will be BM. Let me do it M here, M here. And this will be, this might cancel, so this will be, okay, so I need to put it BM here plus no hmm. oh. b n this is plus this is n this is n and this is plus b n plus one z minus z zero <laughs> and we are getting here yeah this is a finite that one is a finite Lawrence the uh, uh, par, uh, principal part of Lorentz series, so this is principal part of Lorentz series. Lorentz series, so you can see, yes, it's finite. And you can say that one is first non zero, so that means in this case we are also getting that the order, the order of this, the order of this pole is the same as the multiplicity of zero, z zero, of that function one over f of z. So I can write it down, the corollary, the proof is finished. So let me write the corollary. Let z zero be a, an isolated singular point. of f of z 10 z0 is a pole of order m if and only if z0 is a 0 of m of f of z if and only if 
z zero both way is a zero of one over f of z of multiplicity n. So the same multiplicity and order. The multiplicity and order must be the same. So, so this is the one of the corollaries. So, so if we remember, maybe remember, recall let G of Z be analytic analytic at Z zero and Z zero a zero of G of Z. So that's a zero G. Ten the multiplicity of Z zero is equal. To n, if and only if. So of course it has to be isolated zero, or it simply assume that g of z is not identically zero. So that is enough. So that's enough to assume. So it's equal to if and only if the following conditions are satisfied. So first of all, g of z zero is equal to zero. Then g m derivative minus one, of course z0 is also equal to 0, but mth derivative at that point z0 is not equal to 0. So that was one of the things that we were using to determine the m multiplicity of that 0. So, and I, finally I have the theorem number 3. And we know that this is the remaining case. So the follow so assume again, assume that Z0 is a, an essential sorry, 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 sorry. A, an isolated singular point of f of z ten the following following two conditions are equivalent. So the first condition simply says A is that Z zero is essential singularity. Of f of z. And the second one, c, sorry, b, for, sorry, for every alpha belonging to c and also including the I infinity, also including infinity, maybe I should write it more carefully, c including infinity, there exists a sequence Zn convergent to Z0 such that the limit as n goes to infinity of f of Zn is equal to this alpha. Such that this one is equal to the alpha. So let's prove it. So this is proof. So a implies B. So first of all, we'll show, notice, that since Z0 is an essential singularity,
it can it is not it is not by condition by theorem one locally bounded at z zero that means there exists a sequence Zn converging to Z0 such that f of Zn goes to infinity. Yeah, look, it is not, so that means hmm, theorem 1 is not here, so let's go to the theorem 1, to the previous one, it, it's here. Yeah, where is theorem 1? Here, you see? Small neighborhood is bounded, M. So you can make sure that this is not satisfied. So that means you can always find a... For example, you take here 1 over N. Hmm. Where it's really teeny. And then this one. Why it is so so tiny? One over n, and you can find the z n such that f of z n is larger than n, and then this will be your sequence going to the infinity. So that means it will be go it will go to the infinity. So that means this is how it is constructed. So you can have it. So like this, Zn minus Z0 is, is smaller than 1 over N and F of Zn is larger or equal to N. So that clearly goes to infinity. So in such a case, we show that there exists a sequence that goes to infinity. Now, notice that for any alpha belonging to C it means infinity is proof, so I just take alpha that is any complex number the function G of Z which I write it down 1 over F of Z minus alpha also has essential singularity at z0. Clearly, because if it is not essential singularity, we showed it, if the function has removable singularity, that means you can also write it down, f of z, what is f of z? f of z is equal 1 over g of z plus alpha. So if this is as removable or a pole, that means the function f of z has also removable singularity, or that means either pole or removable singularity. Not possible. So it must be essential singularity. And we just prove it. So, by the previous argument, so by the previous argument, there exists a sequence zn convergence to zero, so, uh, sorry, to Z0, such that, let me move it a little, such that G of Z, simply write it down, G of Zn goes to infinity. And now, so let's write it down, this goes to the infinity. So, F of Zn which is equal 1 over g of zn plus alpha goes to alpha. And we prove it. It goes to alpha. Clearly. So now b implies a. And now notice that <coughs> if z0 is a pole or removable singularity, then this limit z to go z0 f of z exists. 
it can and belong either to C or infinity. Infinity is for Paul, maybe this is for Paul, and this one is for removable. So this is removable, this is Paul. So the, the limit exists and clearly it must be unique. It must be unique because limit is just a one number, it cannot be two limits. But here, in the condition B, we have here that this limit does not exist. Because you can write, you can choose different sequences, you are getting different values. So you can say like this, but by B, the limit, limit Z to Z0 f of z does not exist. So if it is not a pole, if it's not a removable singularity, so what it ca what can be? It can be only so z0 is an essential singularity. is an essential singularity. Let me stop here for a while and right after that we'll devote whole class, whole segment, to do the examples, many examples. And we will show how these three theorems are used in order to prove the type of the singularities in the cases it is convenient for us to use them. So thank you for a moment.